Welcome to Bods Mayhem Out. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey, this is Cody Hughes from Fight Like Sin, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys awesome interviews. And today it's an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Cody Hughes. He's the vocalist and guitarist of Fight Like Sin. Fight Like Sin hail from Indiana, and they have released their new single, Caught in the Fall, off their current album, Identity, which is out now. So we're going to be talking to Cody about all that stuff. So, Cody, how's it going, my man? Great, man. Thanks for having me. No problem whatsoever. No problem. So how's it been working with Curtain Call Records so far for you guys? Yeah, Curtain Call has been great. Uh, they're just uh, helping us get our music out to a lot of you know new listeners, and uh, we're getting new fans and getting some more attention. So they've been doing a great job. So thanks to Angela and John and Gigi over there. Those guys have been great. What's impressed or excited you the most about making the new album, if anything? What stands out the most for you on Identity? You know, just um, the the opportunity to, to complete an album. Previously, we had only done, you know, a few uh, or a couple EPs, really. And, um, you know, they were, you know, kind of songs that we had already written previously and um, had rehearsed a million times. So, you know, recording it was pretty pretty simple. When we went into Identity, I think we might have had one song written for it, and then the rest was done, you know, kind of on the fly in the studio. You know, it was just a different experience for us to to write in that manner and, um, you know, not really know what we were getting into at the beginning of the process. But, uh, you know, we, we just try to continue to evolve our sound and, um, you know, hope that people dig it. So any of these songs that are on this album, are they any that came from any of the EPs over to this possibly, or are these all new stuff? No, it's all new stuff. Fight Like Sin has released a single for Caught in the Fall. Was it hard to choose between the current set of songs on this album, which one would be the first single, let alone a video for you guys? Yeah, it's always kind of hard to, to pick, especially when you ask the members of the group, because everyone in the band has their own favorite song. And, um, you know, you just try to, you know, find the common denominator, which one everyone likes, and, you know, maybe get some insight from your buddies or, you know, other uh, artists out there. Just kind of ask them, you know, what, what they feel like would be a good single. And, um, you know, just kind of hope that people people like it. And, um, yeah, to, to answer your question, though, it, it was really hard to, to pick which song, but, you know, we, we felt like, Caught in the Fall was one of those songs that had more of a mass appeal that, you know, was kind of, you know, straight down, straight down the line of what we're about, which is, you know, just creating, you know, melodic hard rock. And uh, that's what we wanted to represent us. Plus, Caught in the Fall was, this video was directed by, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nathan Mowry. How was working with him on this? Yeah, Nathan's awesome. He also did our video for our single Demons as well. And uh, that was put out previously. He is a great guy, great director. He is based out of Atlanta. He's done work with um, like Corey Taylor and uh, Islander, all those guys. So uh, he's also big in the wrestling scene as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, he's, a, he's a good dude. He, he shoots some awesome footage and uh, he makes us look decent. So are you into wrestling or no? I like wrestling. I'm, although... You know, to be honest, I'm I'm not as big into wrestling nowadays as I was back when I was a kid. When I was a lot younger, which I think were like the the glory days of of professional wrestling, like I was a big like Razor Ramon fan, oh. and um, <laughs> you know I, I get super jealous of of Nathan because he actually works for Diamond Dallas Page, oh, and wow. he gets to meet all these wrestlers that I you know just looked up to you know when I was a kid. 
so he gets to you know hang out with them all the time and you know he's buddies with chris jericho so you know he's he's living the life for sure but yeah i i would say you know from like the the early 80s to you know early 2000s that was my sweet spot for for professional wrestling but i still watch it occasionally if i see it on tv if you have not got a chance to check out this new organization called aew i suggest you highly check it out Um, i'm pretty sure that's what nathan went out to las vegas to shoot recently so I'm, i'm sure i will see that because if he's involved with it i usually get to see it either on facebook or youtube or something like that hands down it reminds me of the old WCW days when that wrestling was absolutely awesome. It, oh, yeah. it really kicks everything else's ass right now. I'll just, I'll just say that. Any song standing out more to you than any right now on this album? I mean, I know you guys are close to them, and I know it must change every time you listen to it, but are there any that stand out for you possibly? Yeah, there are certainly ones that I keep going back to that I kind of put more – weight on than others i guess but i know that's not how everyone else feels uh <laughs> but like i i'm personally a, a really big fan of the song far from never it's uh just it's one of those more upbeat songs it doesn't really match our typical style necessarily but it just has a good groove to it and um a pretty catchy chorus so i'm a sucker for those kinds of things and um I like that one. I'm a big fan of Demons just because of the content of it. I I couldn't help but, you know, relate to that song, you know, in a very personal way just because of, you know, what it's about, which is dealing with mental health issues and, you know, uh, overcoming that. It's, it's actually written from the perspective of someone who's struggling. And uh, so it, it just kind of hits me on an emotional level. So I th- those are probably my my two favorite songs off the record but caught in the fall is up there as well it's just more of a song of redemption and and uh you know just saying that you can you can be better than yourself um you know no matter what you're doing in life and i'm glad you guys hit on that because i I think that a lot of folks are not wanting to talk about it that's going through that or they just don't even realize that they have that problem you know, you, you've got the drug addictions out there, and now you've got mental health. It's very, very scary out there right now. Yeah, and I mean, I, I would say to to summarize the entire album, the the whole reason why we, you know, called it's not necessarily a concept album. It just kind of turned out to look like that. But all the songs that we that we wrote for this album, they all kind of have a theme of you know, like it's either a self reflection of who we are, who we've been and who you want to be so that's why we decided to call it identity because all the songs on it are kind of you know calling into question all of those different elements of you know who we've been in the past who we are right now and who we could be in the future and it's it's meant to be positive because there's there's a ton of negativity out there and you know we're not selling negativity we're 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 out here on the corner selling positive exactly and and there needs to be more of that so Kudos to you guys for addressing that first and foremost, man. Yeah, thank you. Who produced this album for you guys, Cody? A gentleman named Brian Bone Thorburn. He has been our producer since our very first EP. He's a good friend of mine. He is based out of Indianapolis as well. We we could we just call him Bone. So and I'm <laughs> sure he would appreciate us just calling him Bone on here as well. So that's fine. He's super talented. You know, he gets us out of our own heads, out of our own ways he opens up new elements for us as far as you know the the sound goes he just he adds that extra input that you know really elevates us and and makes us better as as recording artists so big kudos to him he's he's been awesome to us that was going to be my next question working with bones does he push you guys to your limit and has he got something out of you guys that made you think wow i mean i can't believe he got that out of us yeah, I mean, you know, he has just he has a lot of good ideas and you know, there are some times when you're in the writing process and you know, you're you know, you might be stuck on a verse idea or a chorus idea and he'll say, you know, try this. And at on the face of it you're like, I don't know, but after working with him for years now, I've just learned to trust him and and hear him out with his uh, you know, his vision and you know, it's always worked out. It, it, I've never been upset with any any suggestion that he's had for 
you know, parts of a song or anything like that. So, you know, you just gotta, you gotta trust people that they have your, you know, especially when it comes to producers, um, you know, he's really honest guy. He's going to tell you if something is garbage (laughs) and he's going to, you know, try to make you better because, you know, he's putting his name on it too. You know, so he wants to be represented well, uh, you know, in addition to, you know, the artist. So, so we, we hope that, you know, we, we make him proud as well. And, um, you know, he's, he's been awesome to us. So definitely, you know, owe a lot to, to him for, um, you know, his input on, on all of our songs. Who did the cover art for the album for you guys? That is a gentleman named Preston Barnhart, and he's out of Lafayette, Indiana. We've used him for a lot of our merch designs in the past. And, um, you know, I went to him asking for help with the with the cover art because previously it's just been on me to do it. I'm a very amateur graphic design. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's there's limitations to what I can do. And, uh, I, you know, I just told him, I was like, man, I just, I want something original and I don't want it to be something that's manifested in my head. I want to, you know, just be able to tell you what I want to see, like, as far as like the concept of it and you give me some ideas. And he, he did up about three or four different ideas for us. And we ended up going with the the image there that I don't know if you have that posted up anywhere, but yeah. it's just the, uh, the guy with the hand sticking out can't really see his face but you know we we thought that was subtle but effective so we went we went with that what do you hope everyone takes away from this album or message you hope they hear while listening to it or just any of fight like sins music in general what do you hope everybody gets from it you know um we we always hope that our music has a positive impact on people and um yeah that's part of that's my favorite part about going to play live is uh you know you get to hear from people who listen to your music and you know they'll either show it to you by singing along with the lyrics at a live show or they'll come up to you afterwards and tell you how much, you know, this particular lyric meant to them. So, you know, just being able to connect with people and do that on a, on a positive note. And, you know, and maybe if you can inspire just one person, you know, that's enough for me to justify why we do what we do. So that's kind of the best part about, you know, being in this band. And I mean, it's a creative outlet, but, you also get the chance to connect with someone and and maybe just make their day better just because, you know, you wanted to write about something that is also affecting them in in their lives. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why we do it really. And it brings you back to that surreal moment when you connect with a fan that tells you that I'm sure that brings you to your knees at some points when they say, Hey, your music has pulled me through a dark time. Yeah. And you know, you can, you can only, you know, just sit there and empathize with them because you know, it, all the all the lyrics that have been written aren't you know necessarily just you know pulled out of thin air. It's something that we've felt, uh, something that we've experienced. So you can you can definitely relate to them and you know be in that moment with them. And you know a, a lot of a lot of the songs like especially going back to like uh, demons, which is one of the first songs that we actually released on the album. You know it it's a it's a song that a lot of people can get behind because there's a lot of people out there who have been affected by, you know, suicide and mental health and just the the thoughts of that. So, you know, you can really connect with someone and that song is meant to let people know that, you know, no matter how bad things get, there's someone there for you. You can reach out to someone and you're not alone. This, you know, it's, it's not just you that that's going through this. And similarly, you know, it's, it's saying that, you know, even if you're not this person who's going through these things and you don't have these thoughts, just reach out to your friends and, you know, let them know that you're there for them uh, because mm-hmm. you never know what, you know, your friends are going through, especially since, you know, a lot of these people with these issues stay silent, you know, exactly. so you just need to let them know that, that you're there for them. Exactly. Could not agree with you more, my friend. Yeah. Being, being a young man, plus you've got a couple of EPs out now you've got your album out do you see this band still musically growing Cody from especially where it started from or has it just been more of a personal growth for each of you all involved in this oh well, yeah the the goal is the goal is uh for sure evolution i think we've come a long way from our first EP for sure and you know I, i'll occasionally go back and and listen to to songs off of that album and or that EP and and just think to myself like man i 
I really didn't have very good vocal technique back then. <laughs> or, you know, I was just like, just kind of trying to discover my voice because, you know, I, I was never really a lead singer before this band. Um, I just kind of sang out of necessity and we didn't want to have to deal with trying to find, you know, a, uh, a lead singer in, in our area at the time. We just kind of wanted to, to get up and go. So I volunteered to be the vocals for it. And, you know, I, it's worked out so far for sure, but, you know, I, I've just been trying to improve myself as a vocalist ever since then. And I, I feel like I've, I've seen growth through each one of the, the recordings so far. And similarly, you know, with writing guitars or doing drums, I think we're always trying to get better and make ourselves better and not necessarily trying to write the same song over and over again. Like we don't want to be the band that sounds like that band on every single record. We, we want to do something a little different you know, while retaining our own, you know, sound and, you know, our identity, no pun intended. But, you know, we, we also don't want to be a one trick pony either. We want to give people, you know, some diverse songs that might appeal to, you know, a lot of different people, not just one specific genre. And, you know, that way we're not just rehashing the same stuff. That's a good point. Too. I was going to ask about like, since the evolution of this band, is this the sound that you're happy with or, or are you wanting to incorporate anything else possibly on down the line? Or is it just wide open at this point? It's pretty wide open. I, I feel like um, we have some, some room to, to grow for sure. We incorporate a lot of different elements into our music, especially with like electronics and, and things like that. Um, so it's not necessarily that we're going to be like an EDM band or anything like that, but we have that <laughs> extra we have that extra layer to our music that a lot of just, you know, straight up rock bands don't usually incorporate, but, you know, we're, we're constantly, you know, inspired by, you know, a lot of the new music that's out there. So, you know, there's, there's really no telling where we could go with it because, you know, we all have really different personal choices with, with our music selection that we've all come with in this, you know, in this band, everyone listens to different styles of music when we're not playing together in Fight Like Sin. So, you know, we can, you know, borrow from influences from our past and uh, incorporate that vibe into new music as well. So I, I feel like, you know, we could we could write a song that is more laid back and, and ballad-esque. And the next track might be, you know, like our heaviest song that we've ever written that, you know, is comparable to something, you know, like... Uh, something on like a bare tooth record or something like that, you know, like um, we, we've got room to grow and um, you know, we're not necessarily wanting to pigeonhole ourselves into one particular sound. Do you like to do anything differently during the writing and recording process? I know that's two different concepts, but to help keep your mind fresh and open to not get bored with or not get stale with it. Do you do anything differently that helps you maybe? Well, on this last effort there, there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of time to, to think about, you know, like keeping it fresh necessarily. There was a lot of times where I was super frustrated because I was having to listen to the same stuff over and over again. And, you know, we were just trying to perfect it, but I think it's really just, uh, you know, keeping an open mind and, you know, just sticking with getting your thoughts out there, getting your ideas out and, you know, just hitting the record button and, and seeing what happens. And, um, you know, I think those are sometimes that's where the best ideas come from. What can fans expect at a show from Fight Like Sin who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? What are they going to get? You can expect uh, an entertaining rock show that has some, you know, really heartfelt lyrics. I, I try to look people in the eye when I sing because I mean what I say. And, um, you know, we can definitely hang out before the show, after the show. The whole point is to you know, deliver an experience to our fans and we want to get to know everyone that, you know, bothers to get to know us. So we love and appreciate everyone that, you know, supports us. So can't thank them enough for that. So getting to play for our fans is uh, one of our biggest joys. We're living in the digital era of recording albums to get music out quicker. And plus we got social media now to reach out to more fans who have not got to hear you guys as of yet. Do you like this that we're in now to get albums out quicker, plus to reach out to more folks with social media? Yeah, it's definitely an interesting time. I I kind of grew up in playing in a band when I was about 16 years old, and I think that's around the time when I made my first recording. 
And at the time, the method for getting new fans was you would take about 50 copies of your burned demo on a, on a recordable disc, yep. and you would go to another band's show and pass those out and just hope that someone would not throw it away <laughs> yeah. or yeah. decide to listen to it, you know, and, and then, you know, come to your show. Um, there was a lot more like physical networking involved with that method. And um, social media has definitely made it a lot easier. You know, there's a, a channel on YouTube called Montage Rock that has introduced a, a ton of, I, I don't have a, a specific number, but I know that there are a couple songs I think Never Surrender off of this record and Nightmare off of the previous EP both surpassed a half million views on Montage Rock. And they've all, you know, it's it's been a noticeable transition to where people from that channel will, you know, come and follow us on Facebook or Instagram, or they'll, you know, add us to their Spotify playlists. So I cannot say much in regards to like any sort of harsh words to social media because it's introduced a lot of fans to us. And, um, you know, it's just kind of mind blowing when I'm packaging up a t-shirt and CD and sending it to France or yeah. Australia right. or something like that. Like, I can't believe people from Australia listen to my music, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of social media and, uh, people, you know, spreading the word. So yeah, I'm good with that. What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you, Cody? That said, yeah, that's what I want to do right there. I actually, became a musician by accident that you know there was an accident involved i was actually big into sports when i was younger and um i you know just played every sport under the sun and um when i was 13 years old i was i'm sure you know this about you know being from kentucky and all if you have a father that owns a truck and you're just going around town you just pop the tailgate down and you ride around town right sir yep yeah so that didn't work out for me one time I was riding on the tailgate of my dad's truck and we hit a little bump which uh, caused me to kind of shoot off of the truck so I hit my head on the tailgate and hit my head on the pavement and um, led to you know some some serious uh, hospital time and uh, needless to say I couldn't play sports anymore simultaneously the doctor advised that you know I keep up with my my uh neuromuscular skills and um, try to work on my hand-eye coordination. So he suggested to me that if I had a guitar or an instrument laying around the house that I, you know, practice on that and just make sure that my hand-eye coordination is good. And um, I asked my mom <laughs> if we had anything like that. And she said, actually, you've got two uncles that play guitar. And I was like, oh, no kidding. So I ended up borrowing a bass from my uncle and I could just play it. I didn't really have any sort of lessons or anything like that. I just remember popping in Green Day's Dookie album and just listening by ear and trying to match the notes. And I could just kind of play, I could play bass. And then I discovered that I could play guitar. And that's kind of where I went from there. I just uh, put all my time and effort while I was healing into learning how to play guitar. And, um, you know, I just found a lot of, a lot of relief in that and, um, inspiration in, in writing music. So I'd always been a fan of music, but being a musician, you know, obviously took that to another level. That sucks, man. I, I definitely apologize about that, that, you know, but still you, you've got to do something very, very special that I would love to do, but I can't do shit with. <laughs> so. Well, I was, gonna say, I was like, don't apologize, man. It's, it's kind of the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. So I'm not <laughs> sad that it happened. It, it led yeah. me down a very, a very fulfilling path. But you know, you mentioned Green Day's Dookie. What a fucking awesome album that is. No, not a bad song on it. Exactly. And, and those, and those, uh, that's, you know, that's also something that I try to, that I try to, uh, incorporate into our methodology for recording that album kind of inspires me along with um there's a an album by seven dust called seasons those are those are two albums where it's just like man there's not one song on here that is just okay they're all great songs and that's kind of what i've tried to bring into fight like sin is like we i want every one of these songs to be capable of being you know like on the radio or you know in someone's playlist because they think it's an absolute banger you know what i mean so we don't like b-sides or just you know filler songs or anything like that we don't want to write anything that we wouldn't want to have represent us as a band so if that was the one song that they heard from us would they come away impressed 
So that's always what we're thinking about when we write. I know you mentioned Australia, but is there a country that stands out or even shocks you that Fight Like Sin gets support from or your music even gets played in that area? Yeah, for sure. I think I actually just saw this. Uh, I think it's Germany, maybe. Yeah, Germany is our our second most popular country outside of the U.S. where most people listen to our music. And so I, I think like we're, we're not quite like David Hasselhoff famous over in Germany or anything like that, but they're definitely huge supporters of ours. So, you know, if we ever got to be lucky enough to do an international tour, Germany would for sure be on that list. Is there a band on the bucket list that you would like to work tour with or maybe do an old school album split with possibly? I know you've got to have that one band, man. Well, everyone in the band is huge fans of Seven Dust. We, I know that we've hung out with those guys multiple times. We'd love to do a show with them or a tour with them or, like you said, like a record split with them. We don't necessarily like mimic their, their sound, but you know, like Clint Lowry was a huge inspiration for me as a guitarist just to be able to come up with those like really low tune, nasty guitar riffs that are just, you know, super bouncy and rhythmic and, um, you know, just kind of make you want to, you know, chug along to the beat and, and, you know, breaks your neck kind of riffs. I, I love that kind of stuff. So I think if I had to speak for everyone in the band, I would say seven dust would be that would be that band for us. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Fight Like Sin's new album, Identity. It's out right now. Plus, get out and check out their new single, Caught in the Fall. You want to pick all this up and give this band a fair chance. So, Cody, my man, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy some merchandise, tour dates, all that good stuff? How can you do that? All you got to do is go to fightlikesin.com, and uh, if you sign up for our mailing list, you'll get three songs absolutely free. We'll uh, send them right out to you. And that also puts you on our mailing list, which we send out, you know, uh, discounts for merch and, um, you know, opportunities to hang out with us at shows and win tickets and all that good stuff. So if you go to fightlikesin.com and click on the, uh, the free button, that's how you can get signed up for all that good stuff. Before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, this is Cody Hughes from Fight Like Sin, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our YouTube link plus our podcast link, also soon our Twitch link, and get out and check out Fight Like Sin. Pick up their new album, Identity. You won't be disappointed in this band. Like I said, give them a fair chance, folks. You may, may find another diamond in the rough. So, Cody, thank you for the interview, and I wish you guys the best of luck, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.